approached by nature as a being. Environment, climate, resource we sit under or we sit or above, we really don't even know how much we have. Then you can understand why there was a scramble for Africa in 1884. This is a very wealthy continent. And this state is her treasure base. So, this conference, this conference is so apt at a time where the nation is seemingly losing her economic grip. If you get it right, your excellency, you'll be encouraging others to do the same. Too often, we fantasize and speak about the numbers of people that we have. Oh, we are the largest state in terms of population. We never talk about the quality of people. How well trained are they? Are they productive people or just numbers? The world has gone beyond the stage where you celebrate numbers, you celebrate quality. So the nations that we talk about are not the largest nations in terms of population. That was in the 60s and the 50s, is what they bring to the table. And I believe that this summit, after all this is done, who will sit down, who would craft policies for each and every sector of endeavor in this state, so that we would have truly not just a treasure base, but a front runner. You have all that it takes. You have the capital, you have resources, human that is, and you have something that is very unique, your car. I thank you. civil servants promotion that has been on stagnation for 10 years, you have started it. <laughs> Gratuity and pensions, those who serve the state with blood, sweat and tears, now tired and old, they are now happy. <laughs> but you are not restricted it to the civil service. And so there is a a revolving fund of over four billion to over three thousand businesses, twenty thousand housing units. The Calabari Road is there, but where am I going to? It's an invitation to the private sector. That as you come into River State to synergize, to collaborate, to network, and do business, be rest assured that the people of River State are happy and they welcome you. I'd like to welcome the representative of the director of DSS in River State here, Ozidi Ombe Ebide de Rolands. You're welcome, you're welcome. So very quickly, we will move on to the goodwill messages that we have, uh, and we'll be kicking off with a former executive vice president upstream or NMPC Limited, Engineer Adoke Tondimie OOM, Fellow, Nigerian Society of Engineers. The Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Esteemed Members of the Clergy, my respected traditional rulers, Excellency, I respectfully request that you permit me to adhere to the already established protocols. 
Excellency Sir, I must applaud you for being forward thinking in hosting this strategic meeting, as well as expectant that the outcome would provide a veritable ground in actualizing the objective of diversification. Without doubt, the imperative to foster economic resilience in order to pave way for a new era for a sufficient, self sufficient river state for the benefit of our esteemed people cannot be overemphasized. I am persuaded that the government recognizes the fact that it is its responsibility, like those before, to create a society that benefits all. Perhaps the governor and his economic team, Red Andrew Ernst, who stated, intentional days create life of purpose. This sentiment resonates deeply as we consider the path forward for River State. The excellency sir, throughout our history, the people of River State have experienced four significant cycles of deliberate development plans, each playing a pivotal role in shaping our collective trajectory. One, the strategic plan implemented by the British colony. Two, the regional plan established by the Eastern Nigeria. The third one is the exception of the old river state. And of course, the subsequent revitalization of Greater Port Harcourt Plan. And this is the welcome development that you are doing the fifth one. As we navigate the complexities of economic diversification and resilience, it is essential that we draw upon the lessons of the past while embracing innovation of forward-thinking strategies to prepare river state towards a prosperous and sustainable future. Permit me to say that the current landscape in the river state boasts of a youthful population exceeding about 2 million individuals with a prevailing mindset favoring employment over entrepreneurship. The existing economic climate cannot sustain a heightened tax burden on residents and businesses. The shift of international oil companies that are away from the swamp corporations has led to the stagnation and industrial zones like the Transamadi and Witan Bush. The rapid pace of development by the populace surpasses the regulatory capacity of the River State government. And finally, a lack of comprehensive public publicly available integrated development plan and past coordinated growth strategies for the state. Proposed strategies for economic development in River State. Public to quote the words of Benjamin Franklin who said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Therefore, to move beyond the rhetoric and catalyze tangible progress in River State, permit me to propose some actionable strategies that might help this summit. One, a comprehensive roadmap development. Two, streamline the land ownership processes. Three, infrastructural enhancement and trade facilities for the agricultural revitalization and value chain optimization. And of course, we should enhance our security measures. Finally, environmental audit and conservation partnership. I should add that these and more will help us in growing the economic state of the state. I'm very convinced that these are not exhaustive as we have an array of eminent speakers that will do justice to this different topic. Once again, I deeply appreciate the opportunity to be here and be part of the historical march to create an assured future for our people through productive outcome. The Excellency Sir, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite for the next goodwill message the Chief Judge of Grimmer State, Honorable Justice Simeon Chief Yusuf Amadi. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.
Your Excellency, Sir Similae Kubara, GSSRA, Governor of River State, Your Excellency, Professor Ngozi Ado, GSSRS, Deputy Governor of River State, His Excellency Chief Donald Duke, former Governor of River State and Chairman of this summit. At this juncture, I seek their leave to stand on the existing protocols as laid out by the lead anchor of this summit. Your Excellency, permit me at this stage to stand on the existing protocol. Your Excellency and distinguished guests, I feel honored and consider it a great privilege to be invited as a special guest and to deliver a goodwill message at this summit. I'm pleased to be here, Your Excellency. The theme of this summit, Rivers Emerge, Advanced Pathways to Economic Growth and Sustainability, is apt in all ramifications and captured the mood of the current administration in the state. It is not a mood point that there is a correlation between economic investment slash growth and the effective judicial system. An efficient judicial system provides the framework for stability and economic development. We all know that one of the major functions of the judiciary is to interpret and apply laws to specific cases. In deciding disputes, the judge interprets and applies laws because every statute needs a proper interpretation for getting applied to every specific case. Judiciary as a catalyst for economic growth. The judiciary plays an important role in economic development through fast resolution of commercial disputes. Disputes cannot be totally avoided in commercial transactions. However, such commercial disputes should be speedily resolved if litigated upon. In the social words of a solicitor and arbitrator, Imi Daye Adewe, 2021, he opened, I quote, where these tools arrive, the mechanism available for their speedy and just resolution is usually a factor that investors watch out for before investing in any country. Investors will typically consider the forum for resolution of commercial disputes in the jurisdiction where he is intending to invest. He saw that can ensure that justice is not only served, but that the winner of the dispute can easily enjoy the fruits of the resolution speedily." Unquote. In his words, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fabemi S.A.M., observed that, I quote, "...justice sector is a key catalyst or stimulator for economic growth, investment drive, and revenue generation among others, unquote. Your Excellency and distinguished guests, the foregoing raised the critical question, how much can the local and international investors rely on the River State Judiciary in the strive for a just business society that can project prosperity for the state and other key holders? Efforts of the River State Judiciary in ensuring quick dispensation of justice. Your Excellency and distinguished guests, it is gratifying to know that there are adequate provisions in the River State High Court Civil Procedure Rule 2023, midwife under my watch, to ensure speedy and just dispensation of cases, including commercial disputes, thereby endangering safety and protection of investment. Innovations such as e filing of cases are operational in River State Judiciary. In the area of alternative dispute resolution, ADR, River State Judiciary's multi door courthouse is functioning. The multi door courthouse was inaugurated on 14th, 14th of October 2021 as a court connected alternative dispute resolution. The court where commercial issues can be speedily addressed through 
available mechanism. Best suited for them, and issues are resolved. It is disheartening that companies operating in real estate, lawyers and litigants are not making use of them. More they are interested in litigation, and that's why our courts are congested with cases, cases that should ordinarily go to the multi door where you have arbitration, conciliation, and others. We have also, sometime in 2023, inaugurated the Small Claims Court. The Small Claims Court has its jurisdiction limited to 5 million and has the 60 days within which to conclude and deliver each judgment. It is for the small claims, micro and enterprises. And I deploy, we have done a lot of publicity for litigants to utilize the court instead of filing cases at the magistrate court. I assure your excellency, the executive, the governor of River State, the River State Judiciary is fully in support of the state government effort in driving sustainable economic growth and development in the state. I assure you, I assure in protecting investment and advancing economic development of the state via quick resolution of commercial dispute. So let me wish all very faithful deliberations and for your attention. Your Excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to give his goodwill message, may I respectfully invite the Speaker, River State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Victor Okojoko. Executive Governor of River State, Ama Opu Senebo, Sir Seminian Lai Ubara, Grand Service Star of River State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of River State, Professor Mrs. Ngozi Mma Odo, Distinguished Service Star of River State. His Lordship, Honorable Justice Simeon. C. Amadi, Distinguished Service Star of River State. His Excellency, the former Governor of River State, the former Governor of Cross River State, sorry, Donald Duke. Honorable members of the National Assembly here present, my very distinguished colleagues of the River State House of Assembly, very revered traditional rulers and royal fathers here present, honorable commissioners of various ministries here present, distinguished invited guests and participants at this summit, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, on behalf of my colleagues of the Pence River State House of Assembly, and in conjunction with the Executive Governor of River State, his Excellency, Simnalai Fubara, GSSROS, welcome you to this very auspicious summit, River State Economic and Investment Summit 2024, which indeed is the first of its kind in the span of this administration in our dear state. The theme for this summit explicitly defines and amplifies the very essence of today's event which is aimed at advancing pathways to economic growth and sustainability in our dear state. Economic growth and sustainability are two key indices of any developing society, and this administration, ably led by His Excellency, the Governor of River State, has shown tremendous sagacity, determination, 
and intensity towards ensuring that critical pathways are in place for accelerated advancement in economic growth and sustainability for our dear state. And this is not just rhetoric, for the years of rhetoric are gone. In achieving this vision of advancing our economic growth and sustainability, it is very imperative to note that the legislative arm of government, which I represent in River State, has a pivotal role to play in creating an enabling environment by, the, by way of positive and people-oriented legislation, essential for advancing pathways to economic growth and sustainability of our dear River States. Our legislative policy making and oversight functions are central to fostering a climate conducive to economic development and sustainability in River States. In synergy with the executive as well as the judiciary. And so, it is a banquet of responsibilities in good governance for the people of River State, legislative framework and policy formulation. The legislature's primary responsibility is to develop a robust legislative framework that stimulates economic activity by enacting laws and promoting investment, supporting small and medium enterprises, and foster industrialization. The legislature creates a business-friendly environment, legislation, and provides tax incentives that both attract both local and international investors, thereby boosting economic growth, budgetary oversight and allocation. The River State Legislature's role in budgetary oversight and allocation is critical to economic development by meticulously scrutinizing and approving the state budgets, the legislature ensures that public funds are allocated to vital sectors with strategic investments and infrastructure drives that will not only stimulate the advancement of economic growth, but enhance the connectivity and productivity, but also ensure its sustainability. Sustainability initiatives Sustainability initiatives is an integral aspect of economic growth, and the River State Legislature will be very instrumental in this area by enacting environmental protection laws and promoting green initiatives. The Legislature helps balance economic growth with environmental stewardship. Legislation that addresses pollution control, waste management, and renewable energy Adoption is essential for sustainable development. Additionally, supporting sustainable agriculture and fisheries through eco-friendly practices ensures the long-term viability of these crucial sectors, promoting good governance. The legislature's oversight functions ensure good governance by holding the executives accountable on behalf of the good people of River State. This accountability is crucial in preventing corruption, misappropriations of funds, and ensuring the effective implementation of economic policies. Transparent governance practices enhance investors' confidence and ensures equitable distribution in economic benefits, contributing to the overall advancement of economic growth in our dear states public participation and inclusive growth. An enabling environment for economic growth is also fostered through effective public participation. The legislature's engagement with constituents and incorporation of their feedbacks into policy making ensures that economic policies reflect the needs and aspirations of the broader population. This inclusivity addresses inequalities and promotes a more equitable distribution of economic gains, leading to inclusive growth. Conclusively, let me conclude by stating that this summit could not have come at a better time than this. As our very dynamic and pragmatic state governor is just completing his one year in office, which has 
been used to lay the foundation and strategic pillars upon which a more prosperous river state of our dreams will be built. Today, we are setting the pathway for critical concomitants for the advancement of critical elements and structures to accelerate the economic growth and pathways for the economic and sustainability of our dear river states. Obviously, given the importance of the state's legislature and its instrumentality in making this vision a reality, through positive legislation, it is our avowed commitment as lawmakers to give the necessary support and enablement towards this very auspicious cause to build river state of our dream and setting a sustainable, robust foundation for the future generation. Long live the good people of river states. Long live river state government. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the representative of the governor of Bayosa State, Senator Doye Diri. He's been represented by the secretary to the state government, Mr. Nimi Wafa Ayawe. Could you please come on stage for your remarks, sir? Thank you. Your Excellencies, additional rulers, invited guests, please allow me to stand on the same protocol. As a state, I have brought good tidings from Bayelsa. My governor would have been here himself, but he's unavoidably absent. He's out of the country. But the most important thing here is we have come to River State, our senior brother, a state that gave birth to Bayelsa. Our states strive to find a pathway for economic development and growth. And the challenging times we found ourselves today, this economic summit is very apt. Knowing very well that where River State is affluent and affluent, Bayelsa State will rub off. When, Bias, when River State smiles, we are going to also smile a little. Because it is the center of attraction in the Niger Delta and in the South South. So we will come with good tidings. And to thank His Excellency, that what you are doing is well appreciated by the government and people of Bayelsa State. And together, together, we could not forge partnership, partnerships that will help and strengthen frontiers for our two states. Once again, thank you for this summit and thank you for being a big brother. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. From, that was a goodwill message from the governor of Bielsa State, being given by his representative, the secretary to the state government. Your Excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this summit is heralding the one year anniversary of this present administration. Almost a year ago, precisely on the 29th of May, 2023, during the inaugural speech of His Excellency Sir Siminalai Fubar, Grand Sabista of River State. He reassured the people of River State of his will and desire to improve the ease of doing business and sustain a congenial fiscal regime to attract local and foreign direct investments, to stimulate greater economic activities, create wealth, and improve citizens' livelihoods. Here we are, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, witnessing the conscious efforts of this administration to harness the immense potentials for profitable investment 
opportunities and across, across various industries. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to further drive this home, may I, with all sense of humility, invite to give his summit opening address a man of great panache, one who yearns for an upsurge in the economy of River State, the people's governor, the governor of River State, His Excellency, Sir Seminalai Fobara, Grand Seminister of River State. Donald Duke, former governor of Cross River State. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of River State, the Speaker, River State House of Assembly. Your Excellency, the Governor of Bayasa State. Ebony represented by the Secretary of the State Government. His Lordship, Honorable Justice Simeon Amadi, Chief Judge of River State, and your brother, judges that are here, members of the State Executive Council. leaders of our state that are here, Senator John Mbata, Senator A.M. Purple, Dr. Sam Sam Jaja, and a good number of you, our highly revered traditional rulers that are also here, the Christian Association, ably represented by the Dean of the African Union, Captain of Industries, Resource Persons, Presenters, Panelists, and other participants here with us. Gentlemen of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say that this event without rivers emerge is not a mistake, it's because we believe that it is important to think about the state first. The development of the state is the most important thing. It's not the political rivalry. After politics, we must have a base, and that base is our state. And that base is when there is development in the state, that is a major interest for political struggle. If a state is not viable, I don't think there will be any need for struggle. But I want to say thank you to the organizers who took all the pains, convinced me that at this point, 
in the life of our dear state, there is need to assure investors that River State is safe and prepared to welcome investors in our dear state. On behalf of the government and people of River State, let me warmly welcome all to the first River State Investment Summit under our government, which is barely a year old. We use the word a year old because true governance in this state started in the month of February 2024. I wish to especially welcome the chairman of today's event, my dear elder brother and friend, His Excellency Donald Duke, the former governor of Cross River State, and all other brother governors that are here, at least Bayasa is here, represented properly. Let me thank you for finding time out of your busy schedule to be with us today in this event. I assure you that we will do all it takes to reciprocate this kind gesture. And we're not going to take your presence here for granted. Let me also welcome the special guest speaker for today, Professor Marcos Bako and Kinsley Mogulu, as well as His Highness Panusi Lamido Panusi, OAN, the 14th Emma of Kano, who will be with us to headline tomorrow section of the summit as the key note speaker. We deeply appreciate your presence and anticipate contributions to the development of our state through this summit. Today's event is aimed to advance the investment opportunities in River State. It provides an opportunity for us to hear from experts, exchange ideas, raise questions, and receive answers to the economic and investment challenges we face as a state. Historically, River State, especially Port Harcourt, was an established commercial center in Nigeria. The trans Amadi industrial layout hosted several thriving commercial and industrial consigns that created income, jobs, and prosperity for our state and our people. Sadly, all these are now history, as most of these industrial ventures in that state has either closed shop or become boring. The industrial estate is now characterized by abandoned factory buildings and warehouses. We have since lost our rating as one of the industrialized states competitive as a preferred destination for domestic and foreign direct investment, resulting in the continual posting of low economic growth, high employment rate, and low development. For decades, 
the river state government had continued to depend more on allocation from the federation account to fund these expenditures because tax revenue had remained low due to low investments and economic growth. For us, building a resilient, robust, and diversified economy holds the key to sustainable peace, security, and progress of our state. And the spiritual, social, and physical well-being of our people will therefore commit to the reindustrialization of River State in partnership with the former and organized private sector through necessary policies, legal and other support measures and systems. This is why we approved the River State Economic and Investment Summit 2024 as the first of several measures to unveil the economic potential of the state to both local and foreign investors and markets. Against this background, I feel very optimistic that River State will emerge from this summit and position itself as a premier investment destination, offering boundless economic opportunities for domestic and global investors. The reason for this optimism are clear and realistic. The chairman of this occasion did mention the potential in gas on tap. You can imagine what will happen if it's properly deployed. As a state, the state is blessed with numerous human and natural resources, including oil and gas, fertile soil, solid mineral, and extensive coastal line with great water bodies. The state is the center point of the oil and gas industry in West Africa. We account for over 40% of crude oil production onshore in the country and 100% of liquefied gas that the country exports. The state is also the second largest economy in Nigeria and with a, with a nominal GDP of over $28.4 billion. You know what it means? We have the heart, the economic heart of the country. The state, economic, the state economy ranked in the top 25 economies in Africa, comparable to the countries like Botswana, Rwanda, and Gabon. The state has relatively robust infrastructure, including good roads, two seaports, one international airport, and a free trade zone, with a population of over 7 million indigenous, diverse, educated, highly hospitable people. and a business-friendly environment, the state stands at the center of diverse economic opportunities. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, River State provides several investment opportunities across diverse sectors of our economy, including oil and gas, agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, hospitality, and tourism education, ICT, healthcare, infrastructural development, gas, glass products, and garment production, and power generation, transmission, just to mention the few, with over 40% of fertile 
cultivatable land mass. River State has the potential to make a significant contribution to the national food security with commercial investment in mechanized, mechanized agriculture and agro-processing industrial value chain. Several state-owned but Moribond companies, farmlands, business infrastructures, including oil palms, estates, rubber plantation, poultry, and fish farms are available for interested private investors to take over and revitalize. Additionally, River State presents a lucrative opportunity for commercial production of high-value cash crop for export markets. Given this advantage and many other attractive opportunities, the economy of River State has great potential for serious-minded investors to tap into it, exploit, and be rewarded with a huge profit and lucrative return on investment. Since assuming office, we have prioritized peace and security and focus on growing our economy through partnership and collaboration in line with our belief that it is in private sector, not the state government, that growth can be achieved. Job can be created. Guarantee wealth and prosperity of our people will be assured. Our commitment is to make River State the best place in this country to invest and do business by creating a vibrant, investor-friendly business environment and improving the ease of doing business to boost investors' interest and confidence in our dear states. We have already implemented certain policies, initiative and reform, including prompt allocation and issuance of land titles and certificate of occupancy to prospective investors and a memorandum to state tax. Oh, okay, let me take that again, sorry. And a monorotum on state, on the state tax and levy on new businesses. We also, we're also working on the harmonization of the state and local government tax to eliminate double taxation and the imposition of multiple levy on investors. Two weeks ago, we launched the first four billion Naira matching fund loan with the Bank of Industry for small, micro and medium scale businesses to drive financial inclusion and enhance the growth and development of support and to support those businesses to grow our economy, create jobs and wealth for our people. Furthermore, we have also approved the establishment of the River State Investment Promotion Agency to provide a one-stop shop investment services and facilitate the investors who are interested to come into our state to do business with ease. In the first year of our administration, we received appreciable number of expression of interest from local and foreign investors to invest in diverse sectors of our economy, including agriculture, real estate, power generation, and manufacturing. We have signed a development agreement with TAF Nigeria Limited for the construction of 20 mixed 
housing in the greater Patakos city. We signed another development with Gosh Nigeria Limited for the construction of an international spare parts market. The state government provided hundreds of land, to it, hundreds of land as its equity and had work and work has started in those, those sites. Apache Aluminium LSC of America has started the acquisition of land to establish a multi billion naira aluminium rolling mill in the Ogoni axis of River State. We have opened discussion with an Israeli company in developing our huge agricultural potential, including reviving abandoned agricultural projects and infrastructure, such as the River State Songhai, the school to land farm, the fish farm, the feed mills, oil palm estate and poultry farm across the states. We have earmarked about 10 million US dollars for this project for this fiscal year. Last week, the State Executive Council approved a proposal by Rainbow Heritage Group to build a new port city in the state on about 1,000 hectares of land in collaboration with the Greater Patakos City Authority. We have also concluded arrangements for the signing of a memorandum of understanding with Planet One Holding Limited of Dubai for a 10 million US dollar mangrove forest conservation and carbon capture project under private public partnership arrangement by a large we are the economic habit of the Niger Delta region and the Southeast are focused at this time to grow our economy to greater height so that we can drive more tax revenue to deliver quality social services to our people. Our mantra is rivers first. Our covenant and commitment are to serve our people to the best of our ability with compassion, honesty, and responsibility. I assure you all that our intentions are right, our commitments are unwavering with the collaboration and support of all, we will collectively harness the economic potential of River State to achieve considerably high and sustainable economic growth and prosperity in the coming decade and build a brighter future for our children and grandchildren. As the saying goes, and I quote, when there is light, there is hope. When there is light, there is strength. When you can see into the future, you can muster up enough strength to hold on on a day. Therefore, as we are back on this collective journey to economic prosperity, I call on all to join us to invest in the social and economic greatness of our state and secure the future for us and the next generation. We are happy with the quality of our attendance at this summit and confident that in the end, it will galvanize more investment deals 
in the state. Finally, I express my warm wishes on behalf of the government and people of the state, with the consultants, with the speakers, panelists, and all participants, and organizers for a fruitful and productive summit. While wishing you a pleasant stay in River State, I wish to assure you that we will reach out to all stakeholders to materialize the outcome and recommendation of this summit. On this note, I am pleased to declare the River State Economic and Investment Summit 2024 open. And please, take note that River State is open to business. And not just one business, a lot of businesses. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. Please, shall we put our hands together for His Excellency the Governor of River State? Thank you very much. Thank you. And he made it very clear uh, River State is open for business in diverse sectors. Let me, let me also say this that um, after our keynote speech, the cultural troop will cool down. And the reason being, the River State is also very strong in entertainment. So you have opportunity for investment in entertainment. Uh, you have a state that has the likes of Hilda Dukubo, Basoitaria Jr., Sabinus, Yibo Koko, Tonto DK, and Sam Dede is also a strict strong in entertainment. Your Excellency is distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. To deliver the keynote address, is a man that once, one person once said that if you have him in your team, your team is made. He's a political science economist. He's one sound as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. A consummate professional, hardworking, productive, and a great team player. He has vast knowledge. Even in his days in the United Nations, he transversed five continents which makes him a true internationalist. Please join us and welcome here, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, our keynote speaker. Your Excellency, the Governor of River State, Sir Sim Fubara, the Chairman of the occasion, His Excellency, former Governor Donald Duke, my dear friend and brother, the Deputy Governor former governors, the speaker, the chief justice, traditional rulers, former senators, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols observed. 
It's a great honor for me to have been invited by the governor to deliver the keynote remarks this afternoon at the first River State Economic and Investment Summit. Thank you, Mr. Governor, for convening this very important event to mark your one year in office. Summits like this and the conversations and the discussions that we are having already, just listening to the governor's address, have brought some changes to my own address because I can see clearly that he is ahead of the curve. Some of the respectful, well-intentioned advice and the occasional critique have become unnecessary from listening to some of the things he said. But I want to speak this afternoon on the subject, can River State emerge? Governance, investment, and economic strategy. I came into the country this morning from Washington, D.C., where my global strategy consultant is based. I flew, I left Washington, D.C. two nights ago, came into London yesterday. I arrived this morning in Abuja and caught the first flight to Patakot because this is truly an event after my heart. And as a Nigerian patriot, it is always an honor and privilege for me to support leaders who demonstrate seriousness, who demonstrate purpose, who demonstrate a vision, and who demonstrate commitment to the reason they have been called to serve, and which is to improve the standard of living of the citizens of our great country. So the first question I want to ask is this, when we say rivers emerge, we have to ask and answer the question, emerge from what and where and to what? What is the vision for river state? This is the necessary foundation for any real emergence. There must be a clear answer to this question because it is what will shape the journey ahead for this great state. So the intention is there, the commitment is there, I think we can see it. But as a strategy consultant, I have to say that the vision, the Bible said, I think it was to Habakkuk, write down the vision. Write it on stone. So the vision has to be clearly articulated and then there has to be a strategy execution map to back up that vision over a clear number of years with steps that will be measured in terms of performance. That is my first recommendation even before I begin my remarks. Now, River State, as the governor said, has the second largest economy in Nigeria after Lagos. He reminded us that River State has over 40% of Nigeria's oil production, 100% of its natural gas exports, the GDP is $28 billion, the state has 7.5 million people. I want to situate River State in the world because the bigger our vision, the greater our chance of success. If we do not make it to the sky, we will at least land on the roof. So, let 
dependency to it reverse in a global context. Once upon a present time, there is a country named Norway. Norway is a Scandinavian country that has 5.7 million people. River State has 7.5. So there's a lot of similarity. There are some parallels. And when I say parallels, I mean there are similarities, but there are also differences. Between River State of Nigeria and Norway, for one, Rivers is a state in a country. Norway is a full country in itself. So we must also have that context. But Norway is a very wealthy country. Its GDP in 2023 was $580 billion. So even though Rivers is at $28 billion, the transformation gap is very clear in front of us. The GDP per capita of Norway is $92,000, the average income when the GDP is divided among the citizens, $92,000 per capita per citizen. Norway is the second country on the UNDP's Human Capital Index out of about 180 countries, while Nigeria is 162nd. But Norway is number two. Norway has the world's largest sovereign wealth fund, which has $1.6 trillion in assets under management. And that sovereign wealth fund holds 1.5% of all the equity of the listed companies in the whole world. This is the Norway um, Government Pension Fund Global. It also has investments in real estate and fixed income. Norway invests most of its resource earnings and has successfully diversified its economy away from oil. Norway is wealthy, but it's not because it has oil. After all, Switzerland, Japan, South Korea, they're also very wealthy countries. They have no oil. Not one natural resource is found in these countries. They are some of the wealthiest countries in the world. I make this point because it is very important for us to understand in our country that natural resources are not what make any country wealthy. If it were so, many countries in Africa would be very wealthy. Instead, they are poor. Conflict reading. The reason is because when you have natural resources, there are problems that develop. And if you're not careful, you'll have the resource curse rather than a boom. Everybody begins to, the politics of the country, the politics of the state becomes about who will control the natural resource. And so the country becomes what we call a gatekeeper state because the natural resources are referred to as the gate and those who can corner it become the gatekeepers. So this can distort the path to development of any country and that is what Nigeria is going through today and many other African countries. Africa has 75% of the world's strategic minerals, but only 1% of global manufacture. So River State, in its vision, I believe, should keep these things in mind. The reason many African countries are poor, even though they have natural resources, is because they are poorly governed. This is the story of Nigeria today. 63 years after independence, Nigeria is still crawling. We haven't even stood up on our feet to start working, let alone to start running. Compared to a small country like Norway with 5.7 million people, the difference is governance.
We often make the mistake of gathering at summits like this and we talk a lot about economic theory. Without good governance, without competent governance, no country, no state in a country can make it in terms of economic transformation. Governance is key. And so, I am very, very encouraged to hear the governor's emphasis on governance beyond politics. Because the reason many, many, the reason Nigeria is broken today is because we have made politics our number one job and we have forgotten governance. But if you run for election to any office, as president or as governor or as anything, the reason you are elected is to govern. The politics is simply the vehicle in a democracy to get to the authority with which you need to govern. But the purpose for which you were elected is to make life better for the average man and woman. And let's not forget that. But Nigerian politicians have as a general rule, there are exceptions, but Nigerian politicians have forgotten that the reason they're in politics is to develop human capital in this country. And so our politics has become all about the politicians. When it comes to economics and investment, public governance matters because it is the necessary foundation for wealth creation. Competent governance will assemble the team. Competent governance will make economic policies. Competent governance will create the right environment in which economic transformation and investment can take place. Governance, governance, governance. If you must be a politician, if you must, my advice to you is that the best politics is good governance. Good governance is the best politics because that's what delivers the purpose and that is the benefit of a large mass of the citizens. There is an intent here to promote investment in River State. And so it's necessary for me to say a few words about foreign investment and to warn that it is not a magic wand. It is not. If you think it is a magic wand, look at all the oil companies in the Niger Delta, which have been foreign investing for the past 60 something years. Look at the poverty in the crews. Look at the environmental degradation. Foreign investment does not deliver the results if you do not know how to go about it. It calls for a certain strategy. I began by talking about strategy. Without it, you cannot be successful. So foreign investment helped China. It helped Singapore. And we hope it will help River State. But it helped China and Singapore to develop, but it has not brought prosperity to Africa. Instead, it has in many cases deepened poverty, as I said, and environmental degradation. Even as a measure of confidence in a national economy, FDI, Foreign Direct Investment, has declined precipitously in Nigeria over the past decade. This is because the competence to drive a foreign direct investment strategy is absent. Even more important, the foundation of good governance does not exist. Investors are not fools. Their money works to make a return on investment in stable and well-governed environments. They are not in business to fuel the dreams, the promises, or the egos of politicians in power. That is not why serious businessmen are in business. So if you are seeking to attract foreign investment, it is important to proceed from this foundation going forward. 
so that you have more of a chance of attracting the kind of investment that will actually drive the transformation of your state or your country. And so I say to you, Your Excellency, and to all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen here, that foreign direct investment will help to drive development only when two location factors, quote unquote, location factors we call them, are present. The first location factor is skilled human capital. That's factor number one. The second location factor is infrastructure. And in that context, I want to congratulate Governor Fubara on the kickoff of the construction of the Trans Calabari Highway. These two things are necessary skilled human capital, because the kind of foreign investment you need is not just people to come and extract natural resources. You need the skilled labor that can help to add value to whatever is extracted or whatever is found and produced. There must be value addition. And value addition across a wide range of industries which is what diversifies an economy away from natural resources, requires skilled labor, requires skilled human capital. So perhaps, along with infrastructure, the first part of the investment strategy should be to bring investors that can create those skills in River State. Across the board, maritime, fish farming, there can be massive fish farms on the sea and on water, but it takes a certain type of skill. And these are advantages that rivers have. If you go to Rwanda today, you will weep for Nigeria. Everybody is going to Rwanda. 30 years ago, I was a political affairs officer for Rwanda at the United Nations headquarters in New York, working with Kofi Annan during the genocide. We fought to stop the genocide. Late night meetings in the Security Council. Rwanda was known for horror. Death, one million people killed in three months. Today, you go to Rwanda, you're scratching your head. Everybody is going there, all the investors are going there. Qatar Airways has just invested $1.2 billion, taking a 60% stake in a national airport that is being built in Rwanda. When that airport is completed in 2018, it will change the entire aviation map of East and Southern Africa. Futuristic thinking. Total Energy was supposed to give Nigeria $6 billion in investment. That investment, from reports I have read, has gone to Angola. Has gone to Angola. So, I would recommend a, much, a massive shift to investment in skilled human capital, especially to support manufacturing and service economies and diversify away from oil and more towards gas as a transition out of the natural resource conundrum. But natural gas is a must because when we talk about transition, it's cleaner than oil and it is necessary for our situation at this time, we are talking about compressed natural gas for use, which is much cheaper than petrol. So River State has huge opportunities to be part of the value chain. One professor in America said that globalization is like a bullet train, but it cannot stop in your country if you don't have a train station. What is the train station? value chains. You have to be able to add value to parts of complete products. You see a big Toyota car, you say it was manufactured in Japan. Now lie. There are about 15,000 parts in a Toyota vehicle and most of it is manufactured in places that are not Japan. It is put together finally in Japan. But every part of that value chain has made money. This is where our country, River State, should aspire to be.
part of that global value chain that creates wealth through international trade. And I can see that the determination to do that is there. Now, the governor, you know, the, the truth of the matter, as I was saying, is that the investment environment in Nigeria is fundamentally and extremely weak. We hope that River State will be an exception. But the truth is that our oil industry serves the interests of vested interests. It lacks transparency, starting with NNPs. This is one of the reasons why oil majors are divested, because the challenge of investing in the sector in Nigeria, which is a classic gatekeeper state, is too high for many investors. And there are other opportunities waiting for them. So foreign investment is not about traveling all over the world and saying I'm looking for foreign investors. If, as Governor Fubara has set out his vision to do, you create the necessary condition, the investors will come looking for you. You don't even have to look for them. They will look for you because capital has only one goal, and that is to make a profit. So wherever it sees the potential for that profit, it will go there. So all you have to do is simply to create the environment through the necessary policies, competence, governance, the bright business environment, capital will come. When you have a strategy, you can say that our goal in River State is to expand the manufacturing sector. Our goal is to build the skilled human capital that will drive that. Our goal is to expand natural gas. So you can actually direct the flow of foreign investment to serve the strategic purpose that has been set out in the strategy that River State has developed. Not just welcoming everybody who says they're coming to invest. You know what you want and you are directing that process and you will get what you want. So, this is why the Africa Private Sector Summit, which I happen to be, or have the honor to be the chair of the board of directors and the advisory board, it's a continental organization of the private sector that is driving one agenda, and that is what we call a charter on the private sector bill of rights with 24 rights for businesses that if any government creates those rights for businesses, there is no way that wealth transformation will not occur. So we are hoping that at the next summit of the African Union in February, African leaders will adopt this charter on the private sector bill of rights. So we must stop paying lip service to an enabling environment for business and get on with actually dismantling all barriers to doing business. This cannot happen without competent governance. And I was so pleased to hear the governor say about the removal of multiple taxations. Very, very critical. One of the biggest obstacles people being taxed left, right, and center. Finally, let me say a word on sustainability and host communities of the oil industry. We're in River State. So what we have to do is to be like Norway, like Singapore, or like the Gulf states, to use what we have to get to where we need to be. Because one day, those natural resources will dry up. They're not here forever. But we can make use of them to achieve what we call in economics, economic complexity. The manufacture of complex products competitively with skill and value added to them. So, sustainability and host communities of the oil industry. Let me say that so long as the oil industry works for special interests and not for the masses, 
and the environment in our host communities are continually destroyed so long will we be afflicted with the resource curse and Nigeria cannot enter the Norway trajectory. The NNPC needs to be privatized. The NNPC needs to be privatized. With a stake sold to host communities, the host communities must be one of the owners. It should not be privatized to just people who have money. But the stake that will be sold to the host communities, how will it be managed? That is where governance comes in. We have to set up the structures, transparencies, to make sure that their interests are protected. Stringent, transparent governance will protect the people of the Niger Delta and enable them to become part of what God has given them to be part of a path to wealth and not a curse as has been the case for far too long. We wish, I wish, River State success in the years ahead. And I believe that with determination, with effective governance, with strategy, with competent governance, River State can get on the path to Norway. We must think big, we must think large, and if any state in Nigeria has the potential to achieve this kind of big dream, it is rivers, without question. Thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you, Your Excellency, and I wish you success. Thank you very much for the resounding applause for the former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Kingsley Mogalu, OON, who has served in various national and international capacities. There's been a recurring decimal in the entire conversation today from former governors' statements talking about skills, enhancing soft skills, improving soft skills, to the current executive governor of River State emphasizing very critically on good policies and governance. And then to Mr. Mogalu, who has spoken extensively about improving on River State's infrastructure. The summary for me here is saying that, like the governor did say, government has no business doing business, but government has business creating the right policies and the right environment for businesses to thrive. And so I see men of the diplomatic community here, I see lots of international representatives here. I would like you all to take the messages back to your embassies, your consulates, your provinces, that Lagos State is ready for business and the current government is providing the right environment for businesses to thrive. I would also like... Thank you, I'm sorry, River State, sorry, thank you very much. I would like you all to take the message back to your provinces, your consulates and your embassies that River State is providing the right policies and environment for businesses to thrive. Lastly, while we get set for the cultural performance, I'd like to say that the next speaker is Mr. Magnus Pakol and we'll be inviting him very shortly. Please enjoy the rest of the performance. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please can we put our hands together as we welcome on stage the River State Council of Arts and Culture True as a present Rivers at a glance.
excellences, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, still performing is the River State Council of Arts and Culture Troop. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please can we put our hands together for the River State Culture and Arts Council as it presented the Rivers at a Glance dancers. I'm sure we're all happy to have seen the different displays of the colorful and rich cultural heritage of River State. Thank you very much. Well, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, we were supposed to link up virtually with Professor Magnus Paco. Uh, while the technicians are working on it, we don't want to hold you down. Uh, so we will officially end the opening ceremony while we are still working on it, and then break for tea for about 25 minutes, and then come back. If it's not with us, we'll take the first plenary session. So if we're ready now, shall we rise now for the national anthem?